Okay. So, today we will start with that section of a rational number or cut. Section of rational numbers or we also call it cut of rational numbers. Now, we have already seen that if a rational number is given p by q, where p and q are integer, q is positive and there is no common factor in it, then between any two rational number one can introdu uh, introduce another rational number. In fact, infinite number of a rational number can be introduced in between that and with the help of the sequence of the rational number, one can generate the irrational number and entire class of the rational number can be divided into two parts rational role class and the upper class is it not just like we have seen the set of all rational number which are less than equal to 1 and the set of rational numbers which are greater than 1. So, one divides the whole set of rational number into two parts those which are less than or equal to 1 and those which are greater than 1. Similarly, square root of 2 which is not a rational number, but it also divides the set of all those rational number whose square positive rational number whose square is less than 2 and set of all rational number whose positive rational number whose square is greater than 2. So, this way we are able to introduce the concept of the rational and irrational also. So, let us formalize this part. Uh, the section of rational number what do you mean by that first? The mode of division of numbers into two classes which is described just now is known as the section or cut. So, the mode of the mode of division of numbers into two classes two classes in different way is known as is known as section or cut of numbers. Okay. The in general the section of the rational number section of a rational number of rational numbers the section of rational number can be constructed can be constructed with the help of with the help of two any two properties any two properties say p and q which are which are mutually exclusive that is disjoints exclusive and one of which is essentially possessed by essentially possessed by every rational number every rational number. The meaning of this is suppose we have a set of rational numbers a collection of the rational number. I introduce the two properties on it one is p another one is q. So, suppose p is the property set of all rational number which are less than equal to say 2 and q is a property set of all rational number which are greater than 2. So, what happens the entire rational line number can be divided into the two classes now clear those number which are less than or equal to 2 and the number which are greater than 2 
and 2 is the number which is responsible for dividing the entire class into entire numbers into two sections. So, this 2 becomes the section or cut of the race okay? and this section L r will be the cut corresponding to rational point 2. Similarly, the rest number square root 2 that is also a number which is which can divide which can bifurcate the entire sequence entire collection of the rational number into two parts those number which are whose positive session number whose square root is less than 2 and those positive number whose square root is greater than 2. So, 2 is uh, greater than root 2 sorry greater than uh, square is less than 2 and square is greater than 2. So, root 2 will be the number that one. Now, in this sex way we are basically dividing the whole thing into two classes. The class where the every number in the class if it is it is less than the number of the every number of the class r then we say l is the lower class r is the upper class or we can say a number which possess the property p is less than the number which possess the property q then the property p will generate the class which is denoted by l and is known as the lower class and the property q which generate the class is no, denoted by capital R and we call it as the upper class clear. So, this way we are having the two class lower class and the upper class is it clear now. So, uh, we can say like that if every number every number which possess possesses which possesses the property p which possesses the property p is less than is less than every number which possesses the property q property q which possess the property q then then the former shall constitute the class the class denoted by l and the later one will constitute the class denoted by capital R okay? denoted by capital R and the examples we have seen already that the L is the set of those rational number x which q is the rational number remember okay, q is already there. So, do not write it rational numbers collection of rational numbers such that x is less than equal to 1 and r is the class of those rational points rational numbers such that x is greater than 1. So, this is the property p is it not this one is the property p this one is the property q. Now, you see both the property are exclusive mutually exclusive a point you cannot get a rational number which belongs to p as well as in q. If it belongs to p it cannot be in q and second one is every point in p is less than the every point in q the property which satisfies the property q. So, this will be <laughs> hence this entire be denoted by L r and this since this corresponds to 1. So, we say the one rational number corresponds the section L r one corresponds to this section L r is it ok like this ok. okay. Similarly, if I take L is the set of all all negative 
rational rationals 0 and those positive rational rationals whose square whose square is strictly less than 2. So, okay, the property I am putting here only I am adding minus all rational and 0, but property is basically those positive rational number whose square is less than 2 clear and this in this class we are introducing the negative as all negative and 0 and R is the set of all rationals such that square of this is greater than 2 all positive rational sorry all positive rationals whose square is greater than 2. So, now all these rational number will be filled up here and this class which we denoted by uh, is nothing but correspond to square root class clear is it ok. Now, the difference between this and these two class is in the earlier case one is a rational number and what is the uh, uh, property which enjoy by a rational number is then one must be or rational number which correspond to a section L R must be a point either in L or in R is it not any number which corresponds to a section L R must be a point in either lower class or in upper class. Once it is in the lower class then it becomes the largest number L lower class will have the largest number equal to say 1 here and once it is in R then it has the least number in that, but in case of the section which correspond to the irrational points here none of these lower and the upper class has a largest or least number we cannot have it ok. This does not belongs to neither L nor R, but it divides the whole rational numbers into two parts. The third case is we cannot choose the property P and Q as follows. For example, for example, suppose I take the property P is the set of those rational x such that x is strictly less than 1 and if I choose a property q those rational such that x is strictly greater than 1 ok. Why we cannot choose this? The reason is by taking this type of property it gives the lower class and the upper class fine all the numbers rational number which are less than 1 will form a lower class all the number which are less than greater than 1 will form the upper class, but what about the number 1 is neither belongs to lower class nor the upper class ok. So, we are loser we are not including all this is it correct. So, all the rational number can be cannot be covered similarly a rational number as uh, note <coughs> In case of the uh, okay, the if uh, the lowest the lower class L the lower class L and the upper class capital R cannot have simultaneously. greatest rational number say L and least rational number rational number say R respectively. What is the meaning of this? Let us see first explain this part. What I mean is suppose we have a this is our lower class this is a upper class what I am saying is that it is not possible 
to have the largest number upper lower class will have a largest number as well as upper class will have a lower num lowest number is not possible one of the class if uh, r if lower class have a largest number upper class cannot have a lowest number and vice versa if lower class does not have an upper largest number then lower r will have a least number lower number least number why if suppose it is true it means l number which is the largest belongs to l r number which is the least belongs to r it means the number lower than r will not be available in capital r the number which is greater than r will not be available in l so what happened to between l and r between l and r because l plus r by 2 is a number neither belongs to r r l or null r so there are infinitely many numbers will be left out in between l and r which does not occupy the position neither in l nor in r so it means our section of all rational number is not uh, complete we are not able to adjust all the rational number in one of the class is it not some rational number are out so this way the division is not comfortable is not permissible so that's why what we say we cannot have a property like this which can leave many of the rational number without putting either in r or in l is it okay clear so this is one now it may possible that there may be only one class other class may not exist there may be possible suppose i take all the rational numbers all the rational number get say positive negative and zero they are all belongs to one class that's all 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 the rational number which are less than infinity it form the lower class suppose you cannot have it upper class so there is a possibility that we can have out of these two lower and upper we have only one but that is not the case which we are dealing in fact it is the only case when minus infinity or plus infinity is taken in consideration is it not suppose i want to introduce infinity or minus infinity then this type of possibility is there but what we are dealing is here is we are taking only the finite rational numbers we are we always exactly have the lower class and the upper class and this section lr the cut is denoted by a number alpha which is a either rational number or maybe the real uh, irrational number is this clear so this way we are now <laughs> if we have combined with this then what we get finally is that we are having section of three numbers uh, uh, one is uh, three types of the classes uh, that is one is the lower class has a largest number upper class has no lowest number second class is the largest lower class does not have a largest number upper class has a lowest number and third case none of the class has neither upper nor lower so first two class correspond to a rational rational number while the third class correspond to the irrational number and this is the way that kind has introduced the concept of the irrational number in the number system okay so that is why that kinds <laughs> introduction of ratio that kinds way of introducing introducing irrational number ok. <laughs> so, what is a section of real number since sections all cut of re rational numbers are of three type three type the first type is the class l the class l has a greatest number
say L and the class and the class R and the class R has no list number. This is the one type. Second type is the class L, the class R, not L, the class R has a list number. say r and the class l l has no greatest number greatest number and third type of this is the class l the class l has no greatest number greatest number and the class r class r has no list number list number okay so first two types clearly type 1 and 2 corresponds to rational number numbers L and R respectively while type 3 gives gives or gives a uh, irrational number or corresponds to a irrational number and this way this is the way that kind said introduce the concept of irrational number ok is it clear. So, what one more thing which we can observe from this type that if you pick up any real number it will always be represented by means of the section L R. So, any real number can be represented as a section L R lower class and upper class. Now, this section if it falls in the first two category then real number becomes the rational it will represent the rational point if it falls in the third category then that real number will be the irrational points. Okay. So, now we can say every thus any real number any number any real number alpha can be can be defined can be defined by means of section L R is it ok. So, that is what is ok. Now, <coughs> okay. <coughs> we are into started with we have started with the rational numbers only, okay. And then, while introducing the section, we have come across about the irrational points, okay. So thus, this way we have developed the sections, which represents the rational number, and sometimes it also represents the irrational number is it not. So, if we consider the collection of all these sections aggregate sets of all sets all these sections then this set of all these section will be the bigger class than the set of rational number. Why? Because this sections collection of this section represents either the rational number or real number and every real num rational number can be represented by means of this section or every section represents some rational points, but as well as there are this section which also represent the irrational points, but here right hand side we are taking only the set of rational numbers. So, it means the aggregate of this section is much bigger than the aggregate of the than the set of rational number is it not 
and that gives the concept of the real numbers. Okay? So, that kinds this way has extended the system of the real, extended the uh, rational numbers into a real number by introducing the irrational point in between. Is this clear? So, this is the known as the dead kinds theory. Okay. So, let us see the what is the dead kinds theory is dead kinds theorem. Okay. This is the dead kinds uh, theory. Okay. Same way. So, since since the aggregate aggregate uh, a double g aggregate all the uh, set of all rational points aggregate aggregate of sections of rational numbers rational numbers is a larger aggregate larger aggregate than that of than that of rational numbers rational numbers themselves themselves. So, it includes the section correspond to all rational number n and thus we define the number correspond to the additional section and thus the numbers corresponding to this additional section corresponding to this additional sections additional sections are defined are defined as irrational number okay that is what is So, we have now this dedicant theorem. Now, before going uh, something else, let me just write down the, what is the dedicant theorem. If the system of real number, real numbers. is divided into two classes two classes l and r in such a way in such a way that one each class contains each class contains at least one number at least one number second at least one number second is uh, every number every number every number belongs to one class or the other or the other and and third proper condition is and third Part is 
every number in the lower class lower class L is less than is less than alpha is less than every number in the upper class every number in the upper class R then there is a number is a number there is a number alpha such that such that every number every number less than alpha belongs to L belongs to L and every number greater than alpha there is a number alpha such that every number less than alpha belongs to L, every number greater than alpha belongs to R. then alpha belongs to R. R the number alpha itself the number alpha itself may belong to either class. either class. Same thing which we have written means we have a set of real numbers. Now, what we did is that this set of number divided into two parts lower class and the upper class and which has the property that every uh, member uh, each class contains at least one real number. Second is every member in the lower class belongs to one uh, every each class contains at least one and every number belonging to one class or the other and third is every number in the lower class is less than the every number in the upper class. Then the number alpha is such that every number less than alpha belongs to L while the every number greater than alpha will belongs to R. Now, what happened to alpha? What he says is the alpha itself may belongs to either class. So, when he say may belongs to alpha it means there is a hidden thing if alpha is a rational number then it will belongs to one of the class it has to belongs to one of the class as we have seen but if alpha is a rational number then it will neither belongs to l nor belongs to r so that's that is what he has developed the okay now the question is when he started with this uh, cuts and with the help of the cut he has introduced the concept of the generalize the set of rational number and introduce the concept of rational number. Then with the help of the cut how did he just justify the addition, subtraction, multiplication, division because if when you take the two real number the addition of the two real number is again a real number. So, it should represent some by, by a some cut subtraction is also real number, division is also real number provided is non zero and like this reverse. So, he has also introduced the way the addition of the two cuts is def how to define, subtraction of the two cuts to define, the reciprocal of the cut how it is defined and the So, we will take up first those what are these definitions. Okay. So, the relation of magnitude for real. So, uh, we can define okay, uh, introduce or definition of Def definition of addition, subtraction, division, multiplication in terms of cuts using cuts or sections. Okay. How to define? 
okay, how to define this thing, okay, definitions. Okay. Let alpha 1, let alpha 1 and alpha 2 be two real numbers. Two real numbers given by the section given by the section section all cut you can say section L R L 1 R 1 and L 2 R 2 respectively. Okay? respectively. Now, we say number 1, if uh, every member of there are uh, 4 possible 3 possibility, there are 3 possibility, 3 possibility. Number 1 first possibility is every member of L 1 every member of L 1 belongs every member of L 1 belongs to L 2 and every member every member of R 1 belongs to belongs to R 2. This is the first possibility. Okay. The second possibility is okay. the second possibility is every member of R L 1 L 1 belongs to L 2 belongs to L 2 and every member of R 1 and uh, belongs to but every member of R 1 but every member of L 1 belongs to L 2 but every member of R 1 R 1 does not belongs to R 2. This is second possibility and third possibility is every member of L 1 of L 1 does not belong to belong to L 2, what? But every member of R 1 R 1 belongs to R 2. Okay. So, let us see this. this is first case. Suppose this is these are two classes this is two this is our L 1 this is R 1 this is L 2 this is R 2. Now, what he says first class eh? if first possibility is every member of L 1 belongs to L 2 and every member of R 1 belongs to R 2. So, that is only possible when basically L 1 coincide with L 2, R 1 coincide with R 2. So, if this is alpha 1, here is alpha 2. So, here the case is alpha 1 equal to alpha 2, is it not? Then second case is case 2. Here say this is our L 1, here is R 1. and say 
here is this L 2 and this is R 2. So, here this is alpha 1, here is this alpha 2. So, second case says that if every yeah, yeah this one every member of L 1 belongs to L 2. So, every member of L 1 belongs to L 2. It means the cut alpha 1 all these entire line must be lying on uh, part of L 2, but every member of R 1 does not belongs to R 2. It means the R 1 class supersede the R 2 is it not. So, that is only possible when the position of alpha 1 and alpha 2 is such that alpha 1 is strictly less than alpha 2. Okay? Then third case is if we take say L 1 R 1 this is alpha 1 and this is alpha 2 L 2 R 2. So, every member of L 1 does not belongs to L 2. So, it means L 2 is a subset of L 1, but every member of L 1 is contained. In, so, the position is alpha 1 is greater than alpha 2. So, the if two numbers alpha 1 alpha 2 are given, then one can order them that they are either equal or one is less than the other or greater. it means the set of real number is basically an ordered set field one can easily identify the ordering between the two and with the help of our cuts also. Is it okay? So, that is what is. Then in a similar way he has introduced the positive negative and zero number positive negative and zero number in the in terms of the cuts the real number alpha the real number alpha given by the section section L r given by the section L r is said to be positive is said to be positive if or when the lower class L contains some positive numbers. It means that is that is lower class L will contain will contain all negative zeros and some positive is it okay or not some positive that is if this is a line then a number alpha will be a positive number if basically it is greater than 0. So, here it is 0 and rest are minus 1 minus 2 etcetera. So, this lower class must contain some positive numbers then only alpha will be treated as positive greater than 0 or positive. Similarly, the alpha is negative means what hmm? the real number alpha real number alpha is said to be negative. is said to be negative when the upper class upper class r contains upper class r contains some negative numbers negative numbers that is obviously true if here is l this is 0 here is L, this is R. If R contains some negative number, then only the number correspond to this will be a negative number, is it not? The, uh, the real number is said to be negative when the upper class R contains some negative numbers. 
So, L is totally negative and R contains some negative numbers. So, the corresponding to say minus 1, this will be the yeah, cut, okay, like this. And 0 means what? And if the if all the numbers in R, if all the numbers, if all the numbers in R L are negative and all the numbers and all those in R are positive, then the real number real number defined by the section section is 0 obviously clear. So, there nothing is very simple. So, the, uh, determining point between the L and R. Okay. This is clear. So, this is alpha somewhere huh? negative also <coughs> like this. Then addition, subtraction, etcetera can be done. If suppose L alpha is the lower class, then how to define this uh, number? If alpha correspond to the lower class L R, then minus alpha correspond to minus R minus L. That is all. Clear? This is the class alpha lower and upper. If minus alpha means change the, the sign of elements of R and make it at the lower class and change the sign of L, L with minus and make the upper class. Now, what the difference will come if L has a greatest number alpha is a greatest number in lower class as a cut alpha where the lower class L is greatest number then minus alpha here upper class will have the least number that is all. Suppose I take uh, R, uh, L to be less than equal to 1 then 1 is the greatest number in the lower class when you find minus 1 what happens to this minus 1 becomes here the least number is it not for the upper class. So, it is similarly if alpha is there then 1 by alpha we denoted by 1 by r 1 by l huh? all the property remains the same similarly other. So, for positive for negative for positive and for negative also we can write minus 1 by alpha is minus 1 upon minus alpha okay? like this clear take minus i and then reverse it we get. So, all this means resistance the algebraic operations can be also justify by using the our cuts system. Okay. So, that is what is that. Then sum and difference if suppose we get the alpha 1 is one cut L 1 R 1 alpha 2 another cut L 2 R 2 then sum of this alpha 1 plus alpha 2 is a cut correspond to alpha 3 that is L 3 R 3 such that any number alpha 3 any number A 3 belongs to L 3 can be written as A 1 plus A 2 where a 1 belongs to L 1, A 2 belongs to L 2 for sum. Similarly, R 3 B 3 belongs to R 3 can be written as B 3 as B 1 plus B 2, where the B 1 is an element in R 1, B 2 is an element in R 2. This one? This minus, huh. minus alpha. Huh. Huh. Minus alpha. Huh. So to get the minus alpha, we have to use the. Huh. Minus First, you take this one, then reverse it. Okay. When we will uh, reverse it, huh. then um, this will come here. Means. Uh, huh. Again, it will come minus one by r. Hmm. So it will reverse again the things. Okay. So that will be come. Is it okay? No. Minus one by alpha. In fact, it is the same as minus one by alpha. Is it not? 
minus 1, 1 by alpha and then reverses, 1 by alpha will be this, then minus 1 by r and 1 by r. Now, if we take minus this, minus means this, reverse it. So, minus 1 by r here, same thing will come. Now, here also addition can be done like this, is it not? What is the meaning of this addition is suppose we have this alpha 1 cut L 1 R 1, alpha 2 is this cut L 2 R 2. When we add this thing, this is alpha 1 plus alpha 2 we denote by alpha 3. So, this is L 3 R 3. Now, if I take any point A 3 here, then corresponding to we get a point A 1 here, A 2 here such that a 1 plus a 2 becomes a 3. Similarly, if we take b 3 point here somewhere is it not a b 3 then we can find out b 1 here b 2 here such that b 3 can be written as b 1 plus b 2 clear. clear. Similarly, subtraction, multiplication and other. So, we are not going this thing if we found the multiplication in a similar way you can write the multiplication and division is it ok. So, we are not going for the detail. Okay. So, then between any two real number there are infinite number of real numbers one can easily prove just like a between any two rational number there are infinite rational number is there. So, between any two real number one can always find the name. So, this between any two so some result the result is between any two real number. two real number between any two real numbers there are infinite there are infinite number rational numbers second result is between any two real numbers between any two real number there are infinite number of irrational point number of irrational numbers infinite number of rational points infinite number of irrational points numbers in fact, this I will prove it, but just I will give a hint how to suppose there are two numbers real numbers alpha 1 and alpha 2 there are two numbers this is alpha 1 this is alpha 2 L 1 R 1 L 2 R 2. So, between these two number L 1 alpha alpha 1 alpha 2 there are infinite number of rational point why because L 1 alpha 1 is less than alpha 1 and alpha 2 are given one can easily identify either alpha 1 less than alpha 2 or alpha 1 is greater than alpha 2 or may be equal suppose less than alpha 1. Then every element of L 1 is the element of L 2, but every element of R 1 is not this it means some of the point R 1 is also in L 2. So, if, if I take any point A 1 here and here is say B 1 then these are also the point here L 2 and since L 2 is the collection of all the number which are set is less than alpha 2. So, in between those we can uh, still find the rational number. So, there are infinite rational number can be introduced similarly. Okay. So, we will do it this result thank you very much. Thanks.